Well, hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I unboxed and first used this Type A Machine Series 1 on a live stream on YouTube. The voice was a little bit behind, the audio was okay, I had some issues with the first print, so I wanted to summarize my first use experiences because as you can see, it's printing right now. So let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. You've never seen me film here before, and this is a wall in my house, and this is almost like my staging table. This is where uh, I bring machines when they're first unboxed, and I kind of want to get the use of them. That way they're not packed behind other machines or in the way of other stuff. It's right here, and I can get around it, and I can use it for the first time to really get a handle on how it works. In my unboxing video, you, you saw me take this out of the box, and it does look hefty because it is hefty. It's sheet metal on the outside, and it's got linear bearings for the X, and it's got linear bearings for the Y, and the whole machine runs incredibly smooth. You can tell that this machine is built for more of a professional user. The machine does not have a screen, which does make usage a little bit interesting for someone like me who has it at their home rather than in an industrial complex or some sort of pod where many machines are being controlled by a computer. You control this via a website and the website is built into here. In fact, it's Octoprint. Shout out to Octoprint. It does include a camera right here to monitor and to film time-lapse prints. The heated bed itself gets up to temperature incredibly fast. In fact, to 55 degrees, it took less than a minute to get it there. It's heated evenly across the entire glass plate. The nozzle itself is fast as well when heating up, and I was able to feed the material in very, very easily. It's got a blower fan right here for the filament, and it's got a fan in the back to cool the throat. Leveling this printer is a little bit interesting, and it does involve having to use the website that's built into this machine in order to complete it. There's a knob in the very back that adjusts the height of the build plate. Once you get it to a certain level, there's another knob over on the side that you turn in order to bring the nozzle closer to the build plate because the build plate can only go up so high. The only difference is the white knob that adjusts the build plate gives you immediate feedback because you can see the build plate moving up and down, but the black knob on the back right doesn't give you immediate feedback. What you have to do is home the nozzle using the software on the website and then see how far away it is and turn the knob one way or another a little bit at a time, rehome the nozzle and then get it to that perfect spot. I must admit, it was a little bit frustrating doing that, but once I got the nozzle and the build plate all squished together just right, it's able to traverse the entire build plate and lay down a very even sheet of plastic as it goes around. It's really kind of cool and it was interesting. Once my leveling process was done and my frustration was over, it did start to perform just like I had hoped it would. When you start the machine and you're able to join it to your network or you can have it create its own access point in order for your laptop or phone to get to it, you're presented with a couple different starter prints within the Octoprint software inside. And this right here was my first print. This is the little Type A Machines cone and I printed this using their white matte PLA and it turned out, uh, it turned out good. There are some, some top layers here that look to be a little bit over extruded just slightly and the seam runs up right here in a line so well, it's an example print, so I'm not, I'm not expecting world-class out of this example print. I just wanted to make sure the machine worked and this little cone provided me that information. Once that cone was done printing, I put on this. This is the Type A Machines Everyday PLA Black. It lays down really well and I was able to get started on a print. Once the cone was done, what I wanted to do was produce a very large print that it consumed a lot of the build plate and, and I use this. Unfortunately, that first print of that Darth Vader head ended up like this, and there was a serious amount of layer shift. So the, the bottom looked good. Where it attached to the build plate, I'm just using PVA glue on glass, which is what they recommend for this. But the layer shift, I wondered what happened, and I figured it out. When it's moving back and forth on the Y axis, when it moves to the back, that filament is backed up, and if the spool of filament is feeding the filament over the top, it backs that filament over the spool holder and the spool itself, and then it gets caught up and wound around the, the, the spindle, and at that point, it drags. And when the nozzle tries to go to a certain spot, that filament keeps it from going, and then it just, well, you get a layer shift, just like this. From there, I thought, well, this is interesting. Let's try it a different way. So what I did, instead of feeding the filament over the top, I fed it underneath, thinking that maybe that would allow the filament more room to, to move, and I started to print this, but oh crap, this failed too. 
Oh, Darth Vader, you've, um, you've never looked better. So with this model, I did experience the same layer shifting because the filament did get caught while going through and it did finally get unwound a bit over the, the top of the spool and uh, it got caught up on the spindle and, and it was, well, this is what happened. So during this, I thought, well, it was getting this far, let's protect it a little bit. So I created this little cardboard piece and how this works is the filament went through this little spot right here, would come out here and I, and I put it towards the back thinking that the filament itself wouldn't be knocking back and forth within the spool holder and then it wouldn't go over the top and it wouldn't, well, then it wouldn't fail. But uh, this was on there and it did fail, so I needed another solution. So I implemented what I thought was a new solution and I printed this tiny Darth Vader head and it, it looks okay. It's not going to win awards for the best print ever, but I think as an example of me trying to fix a problem, I think it looks okay. And what I didn't notice is in the spool holder that they sent, there's a tiny little hole at the bottom. Uh, I was dark in the garage when I was unboxing and it's a black material that it's used, so I couldn't see this tiny little hole. So what I did is I fed the filament over the back and through the hole and then into the extruder itself. And that seems to be working right now. The angle that it comes into that little hole is a little bit extreme. So I used a piece of cardboard to kind of slow it, to slow down that angle. I don't even know if that's the right term, but I'm, I'm reducing that that sharp angle to more of a curve and hopefully the filament is being fed just nicely. So it makes a little bit of noise when it's feeding through, um, but if it works, I don't really care. At this point, you may be asking yourself, well, Type A is a, is a company, right? They sell a lot of these machines. These are as expensive machines and, and people use them all over the world. Surely this must be a greater problem. I don't know the answer to that question. It's maybe it's not an issue. I have been in constant communication with Type A, members of the engineering team. They have redesigned the spool holder and I'm going to get access to it so that I can give it a try. Plus, I think that they found my unboxing and my feedback very valuable. So I don't know, we'll see where this goes. All in all, I think for the first use, I've learned a lot about this machine and being in contact with the company gives me gives me a good feeling knowing that they're listening to what I have to say. And in the end, that's kind of what I'm trying to do here, right? I want to educate myself on this printer. I want to educate you on this printer. And I want the company to take any constructive feedback that I have and implement changes in their process or their hardware or their software or whatever it takes to make their product offering better. And lastly, I don't want to hide anything from you, my audience. I want to give you a complete picture of what I think of this machine in an unbiased manner. And I think in order to do that, I do need to tell you about my experience so far. I don't think my experience is optimal for a first use, but I think, like I said before, I've learned a lot. And I think that once this massive print finishes, I'll have a really good idea of what to expect next. And when that new spool holder comes, I will test that as well and hopefully show you that on video. Well, hey, that's really it right here. I hope you enjoyed this kind of summary of an unboxing and first use. I hope I gave you some valuable information and I hope you stick with me for the videos I make about this machine and eventually the review I'm gonna have for you. Plus, in the future, I'm working on it, but I may have a surprise and I'm really excited about it. And if it comes through, I think you'll be excited about it as well. But until then, I don't wanna say too much. Give it a thumbs up if you found this useful. Of course, leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.